going to take a look at some of the new features and enhancements to the sculpting workflow in Mudbox 2010. The first thing we're going to look at is the addition of a new file format, uh, in this case Autodesk FBX format. So here we are in Maya where I'm building my base mesh uh, for my character to sculpt. And I want to actually take advantage of the modeling tools in Mudbox to actually build my base mesh further before I get into sculpting in detail. So you, see, you can see here I have some image planes set up and as reference for my character front side and top and I can go ahead and select the base mesh and all of my associated image planes here and actually now just go ahead and export that out in FBX format from the pull down menu here and I'm just gonna go ahead and save uh, that file and you'll see from the dialog menu here that I just want to make sure I have embed media actually checked on that I'm just gonna go ahead and export that we'll hop over to Mudbox and I can now just go ahead and use open and you can see my file format here and it's going to bring in the base mesh and the first thing you're going to notice is it actually has brought over the initial shading group uh, right out of Maya there. I'm going to go ahead and just change this to the default material mud box um, just for my sculpting purposes here. So I can now take advantage of some of the modeling tools in Mudbox to work on my base mesh. I haven't subdivided yet, I'm just working on the base uh, level zero mesh and I'm using the sculpt tool and the wax tool and I'm just kind of going to work around and work on the overall form or structure on the character. So he has these kind of protruding cheek bones. I can just kind of work those along to his ear, uh, put some kind of like a sunken kind of chamber underneath his, his cheek bones in here a bit. And I just kind of want to get that base form in and around his temple here. And I'm just starting to kind of get a feel overall um, for the base, that important base form of my uh, base model of my character here. So. I can go ahead and kind of work up along these. He's got this kind of large protruded brow here we can kind of work on. And then of course I'm going to bring start working the nose here. And The nice thing about this is I can take advantage of those image planes that came over from Maya. So if I just go ahead and jump into my side view camera, look through it, I'll use the grab brush and just start to kind of pull the geometry out into the shape of my reference images here. So I'll just kind of adjust the nose um, and the forehead here a bit. Uh, and then we'll just kind of maybe bring the chin in a little bit here and the, the neck and the throat area here and just kind of fit the overall base mesh uh, to the reference images here and then I'll just jump back into my perspective camera here and just continue to model. So here we have my base mesh here still at level zero and I've actually sculpted out the shape and form. You can see in wireframe here we actually now have the ability to preview faceted um, the faceted model in a proper format here. So instead of that patchwork we used to have before, we can now see it in a proper faceted display. So I'm just going to start jumping up a couple subdivision levels here. I'm going to go up to about level three and just jump into a new layer and work with my wax brush. So the wax brush has been substantially improved in Mudbox 2010. Uh, previous versions of it, we could uh, build up lots of forms and you could sometimes get a little bit of a lumpy effect. We've now really worked that into this really nice um, build upon, kind of like building upon clay material here. So you can see it's excellent for building up structure like underlying muscle and tendons and things like that. And I'm just going to work around my character here to just start getting in some of that essential base form of the uh, musculature and some of the tendons and things like that. Um, and I can just start working in along his temple here, maybe put a little bit of musculature there and of course in the jaw and along the back of the neck and skull here we'll just start working in some of the form um, of some of that muscle and then in and along the back here a, a bit more. And I can just keep working with uh, my character this way and then eventually what we can uh, do here, let's just work in a bit around, around the throat. You can see I'm using symmetry here to model. Um, and that's fine. So I'm actually going to go ahead and turn the, the uh, mirroring off and um, just jump into my grab brush here and just kind of adjust and make him a little bit more asymmetrical here. So I'm just going to adjust that throat and kind of pull it around a bit so that we have a little bit of asymmetry happening here and uh, just adjust a bit of the muscles there. Just kind of randomize it a little bit more. And that's fine. And then what we can do is I'm actually going to jump up to uh, the level four of subdivision here. And I'm actually just going to create a whole new layer and start to work with my wax brush a little more. And then this time I'm actually going to throw a, a nice little uh, stamp effect on my wax brush. I'll put my mirroring on. 
And I'm going to use this rake stamp here so I can effectively use this as a clay rake tool and I can go in and start to kind of define some of that striation along the muscle or just again working with some of the form and structure. And if, To preview this and as a sculpt date I'm going to turn my ambient occlusion on. Uh, we have some improvements to the ambient occlusion here as well. So I'm just going to use that as kind of a uh, sculpting aid just to kind of see my overall depth and form of these kind of rake effects that I'm getting along my character here. And I can use this to get some nice kind of tendon effects or some nice kind of uh, striation here along his underneath that sunken cheek area and just kind of work it in here and uh, get some different kind of skin effects as well and just again really build this up before I even get into real detailing on the character and just start to kind of build this up as a stage kind of before I start to detail the skin a little bit more on my character here. So here we are, I've just jumped up to my uh, level 5 of subdivision, we're at about 2.7 million polygons and one of the cool new things in Mudbox 2010 is the ability to um, model or sculpt utilizing texture images with mirroring on. So previous versions we weren't able to do this, we can now take advantage of um, using textures and different images here and mirror it across the surface. So here you can see I'm putting some skin details on, taking advantage of the mirroring uh, with this image here. So I can just go ahead and put some skin detail across this character. I'll just throw some on the top of the head. And of course, using symmetry, I'm going to probably end up with a little bit of a mirrored seam along the middle. And I can just go ahead and quickly turn off my mirroring and just kind of uh, get rid of that, that seam a bit there. Just paint it out. And then I can adjust the opacity of my layer here if I want to bring down that overall skin effect a bit. I'm just going to go ahead and grab another stencil here and I want to kind of put some uh, scale effect in and along his jawline so I can just kind of adjust this uh, kind of scaling effect here and I'll just adjust my my overall brush and I'm using the sculpt tool with the mirroring on once again and I'm able to just go in and kind of sculpt in this kind of scaling detail here along his jawline and just kind of take advantage of that image and just paint in the areas that I want to use for my detailing on the character and then of course I can preview my overall results with my ambient occlusion as I'm modeling here. So you can see with the mirroring the effect is uh, mirrored across the other side of his jaw as well. We also have some new viewport filters available in Mudbox 2010 so I can now use my normal map viewport filter to preview how my normal map will look before I even go ahead and generate one. So this is a nice feature just to preview your overall effect of it. Um, and in the ambient occlusion we have a couple new things. We have a cutoff radius to kind of adjust or tighten your overall effect of ambient occlusion. Of course we get a nice preview there. We've now added that to the extract maps area here and you can see we have a new interface for the menu for this. So really nice. You have the choice of doing a map for each individual target or a map for all of them. Of course there are different resolutions that are available in there and our different settings to get a general ambient occlusion map or even a cavity map quickly out of there as well. We're just going to take a look at some of the lighting effects here. So I just have a preset that I've created here. I'm just using some HDR lighting, some real-time shadowing, and I can use this to kind of preview my overall sculpt and get a nice feel for the overall sculpt in Mudbox real-time using HDR rendering. So there's an overview of the sculpting tools and enhancements for Mudbox 2010.